G'day folks, Ren here, and it is time for a vlog. So I am currently in England in Kirsty's house and she has so much manga that I have been desperate to read. So that's what we're gonna do. Both she and I have pulled out a bit of a stack of manga. I pulled out ones that I'm really interested in and she pulled out a bunch that either she really liked or that she thinks I would like. Oh my God, I am being blessed. Hey. Hello. Hello. One of the best parts is that their cat loves me. It's so good. But yeah, so we have, wait, how many do we have? I haven't counted. Ooh, we have 13 manga volumes. I don't know if I'm actually going to read all of these, but the plan of this is I'm getting Kirstie to pick my manga. I'll get her to pick one, whichever one she wants to pick, and then once I finish that, I will get her to pick a next one. And we'll just keep doing this until I'm done. <laughs> Whether I'm done with the stack or not, who knows. So we have Wetakoi. Love is Hard for Otaku, Ten Dance, Perfect World, Sweat and Soap, The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today, Restart After Coming Back Home, One Punch Man, Natsumi's Book of Friends, Imakoi, The Promised Neverland, Mao, Ten Count, and last up, The Summer You Were There. Those are all the mangas that Kirsty has to choose from. We'll see how many I get through, but if I don't get through them for, for this video, I might just read them separately later on. Who knows? But let's get going with manga number one. Warn me that you'd already started. So you will also essentially be picking my very first read of the year. <laughs> Not to put any more pressure on you. Thanks. <laughs> Could you tell me that after? Oh, it's got to be a good one. Well, I know you're going to love The Promised Neverland, but I absolutely hated it. So I'm like, I don't really want you to read that. <laughs> That's fine. You pick, or do you want to pick your favourite of this stack? <laughs> which i know there's a, like at least two that mm. are you, like your faves okay for your first because it kind of relates to us and it's nerds i'm gonna pick watakoi hey. watakoi love is hard for otaku so this follows two anime slash gaming nerds one is more into like boys love and cosplaying and anime the other one him is more into gaming and after several failed relationships, he goes, well, how about you just date me? And maybe our two brands of otaku will complement each other. And boy, do they. And it's just so sweet, so cool. And it kind of reflects Ren and I because I fall more onto the gaming side of otaku and Ren's more on the anime, like manga side. And so I just feel like the characters kind of complement us very well. So that's my pick. No way. Okay. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget. I use them all to push me to my best. So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like and Find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless So last night I finished Watakai, Watakai, I can't really pronounce it, my bad, volume one by Fujita. So this was Kirstie's first pick for me and like I wasn't sure if I was going to like this. It didn't seem like my usual type of thing. For one, it's a straight romance. 
but I don't know I think because it was kind of about gaming I thought I wouldn't enjoy it because I didn't enjoy Cat Gamer unfortunately. Speaking of Cat, hi, hello, oh hello, oh he's so cute you just demand attention and I give it to you every time but can I go back to talking about a, a manga? Okay so yeah I wasn't sure if I would like this but in the end I've given this four stars. It was so cute. The amount of times I was just like giving little little squeaks because it was so cute. Oh, it was amazing. So it's just about these two people that decide to start dating because they are both otaku, which is like a mega fan of something, usually something geeky. So the guy is a really intense gamer and the girl, she writes BL manga, which is very cool. But they're both, they're both just like super nerds, basically. And they have found relationships in the past to be a bit difficult. So they date each other. And it's so cute. So cute. Just this guy, he's amazing he he's so in love with this girl and it's beautiful and then there's like some gaming bits in here that i really really liked this was very very surprising with how much i loved it like it was a great first book of the year as well because it was it was fun and entertaining but also really cute and i had a really good time reading this i will have to get kirsty to pick my next manga but before we do that we went book shopping yesterday so I'm going to tell you about all of the books that I bought, because there were many, and I have to fit them all in my suitcase. So when I say I bought a lot of books, I bought a lot of books. So Kirsty and I went exploring in Tamworth, and you would have seen a little bit of B-roll of all that. It was really, really pretty, so much history, and it really helps having a history buff girlfriend. Because she was able to tell me so much about Tamworth and it was really, really cool. So I had a lot of fun. And then after we went exploring, we went into the works, which is kind of like a stationary plus bookstore. But they were having like a New Year sale. And when I tell you that like they have sales, a lot of these were bought because they were so cheap. Like, you don't get these prices in Australia. So the first one I got is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. It was £2.50, which is like $5 for Australians. Amazing. At this price. How could I resist? I mean, my suitcase, that's how I could have resisted, but... Then I got Witches, James First and the English Witch Hunts by Tracy Borman. This was three pounds and Kirsty found this for me and I was immediately like, ooh, also the cover, that's a cool cover. Why not add to my suitcase weight? Then I got Glitterland by Alexis Hall for one pound. These prices are unheard of in Australia. Especially like, this is a fairly new release. Like It was a pound, how could I resist? I couldn't, clearly. Then we have a book that I've never heard of. That is The Problem with Perfect by Philip William Stover. But this is like this queer icon goes missing before one of the episodes of his show. And his producer goes in search of him, ends up finding his twin brother. Gets the twin brother to pretend to be the other brother. And then I think feelings ensue every book I'm just like hmm I have to fit you into my suitcase which was already pretty full before I arrived in England so choices were made okay do I regret them ever so slightly but then I put the first three books in a series decisions were made but they were so cheap and I've been wanting to read these for a little while and they were so cheap I got only when it's us always only you and ever after always all by Chloe Lease, which are the first three books in the Bergman Brothers series. Are you noticing a theme? I have no control when it comes to cheap books. Ah, and now on to whatever Kirstie picks for me next for this manga video. So not only are we introducing Bluey to the Australian. Yeah. Came all the way to England to watch an Australian show. <laughs> And loving it. Last time I went with one that I loved, this time I'm going to go with one that I didn't like, but I think you will love. Mm. 
Actually, I know you're most excited for that one, so you can have a different one. <laughs> um, no, you can have that one. Woo! So, well, explain why you didn't like it, maybe. It's a group. It's an orphanage with a group of kids who are tested every month or week, and it's basically the ones who don't test well disappear, but they're told that they're adopted. And then they discover that actually there's something far more sinister going on and that they don't live in this safe community like they thought and their mum is actually just evil. And I didn't like it because it just made me very uncomfortable and there's a couple of bits of artwork in this that just left me feeling very disturbed, especially as someone who's worked with children and would like to be a mother someday. Mm -hmm. it, it just left me very discomforted and it was a bit too more on the horror-esque side for my liking which is why I know Ren's gonna love it. <laughs> Okay, so I know there really wasn't any like b-roll for this one, but I just finished The Promised Neverland Volume 1. I'm obsessed. This was so good, I could not put it down, and I couldn't really like film anything because, spoilers, this was amazing. Oh, hello, Jindy. Hello. I'm living my best life. Oh. So good. So good. Look, you just took cute this kitty. Anyways, Promise Neverland. It's amazing. To everyone that has been telling me to read this for years, thank you. And I'm really sorry I didn't listen to you sooner because uh, this was amazing. Five stars, obviously. Um, this was very much a horror that I enjoy where it's creepy and the art style is creepy but still enjoyable. But it's also like really disturbing, but it doesn't focus on the disturbing stuff and it's really intelligent. So it's about this orphanage full of kids and they are looked after by one caretaker who they call mother then two of the kids discover that things aren't what they seem and it turns out that it's not an orphanage it's a farm yeah you you catching on mm -hmm. yep that's what this is and then it just kind of goes from there and these kids are wanting to escape but the mother is like three steps ahead of them, which is fascinating. I love when there's always kind of that character that is always so far ahead and has planned every situation. I love those. So this is amazingly good and I cannot wait to read more of it. Oh, she's behind me. Hello. But yeah, I cannot believe I waited so long to read this and I don't even know why it took me so long. It just kind of kept not being a priority, which is sad. I had the best time. I really could not put it down. And the only reason I put it down was to go to sleep. Now i got to figure out what Kirsty wants me to read next. Next is Restart After Coming Back Home because I've just filmed it in my December wrap-up and I can't be bothered to put it back on the shelf. So that's the next one. He comes home after like sort of failing to make it in the city and this guy was kind of adopted into the community while he was away and this kind of like learning about each other and they end up just involved in each other's lives that then develops into something more and there's some really sweet relationships and messages in this one.
Okay, I just finished Restart after coming back home, and I don't know. Like, I want to love it because it was queer. The story jumped around so much. I feel like I didn't really get to know the characters at all. I just, I didn't have the best time. I wasn't super entertained. I was just kind of bored. So that sucks. I think I'm going to give it like a three star or like a 3.25, something like that. Which is upsetting because I've been so hyped for this for so long. I just didn't like it. I was, I was just bored. That's all I can really say. I was bored. And I was talking to Kirstie about this last night. And she said something like, there's no sense of time in this. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of it. Because you don't really get to know how long these two guys knew each other. You know, how long in between all of these events that happened. It was a little bit confusing. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of sad because this wasn't great. But that's fine. I've read another one. And this is actually the mandatory read for my adventure thon TBR, which is great. Which I did definitely complete that. My prompt was like a, a really, you know, happy-go-lucky type book. And the love interest in this is definitely that to a T. So that definitely completed the prompt successfully. So at least I've done that. Now on to another manga. Okay, uh, right, I gave you one that you were looking forward to and that I was thought you would enjoy. So now I'll do another one that wasn't so great for me. Well, we're starting to run out of those. <laughs> Are there any you think I won't like? Weirdly, yes. Ooh. There's two. <coughs> one that I also didn't like mm. that you might have the same issues with. And then one that I loved and gave five stars, but a similar one that I read and gave five stars, you only gave three or something. Yeah. So I'm going to go with this one. And that is, the masterful cat is depressed again today. Ooh. Now, things that I feel, because like you read Cat Gamer that I loved and you didn't, and mm. I feel like it will be the same kind of issues here that you won't like. Where it's like they don't really explain why the cat is the way the cat is and there's not really much in the way of plot. Right. So I feel like that's going to be... But I really loved it and I just love all the cutesy moments with the cat. Mm -hmm. But it's basically like you've got... She's just a regular woman who goes to work and everything but she's very bad at taking care of herself. Meanwhile, her cat has like... Don't look at me like that. <laughs> don't... <laughs> Meanwhile, the cat is basically you, and it's just like this cat that's just grown to a like abnormal size. This cat's like six foot tall, or hey, seven foot tall, something stupid. Um, but he's also like he knows how to cook and clean, and he does all the housework and takes care of her and makes sure that she looks after herself. So you might enjoy it if you think of it as me and you. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm not sure how you're gonna feel about that one. I gave it five stars and loved it. But I nice. feel like you're all gonna be more like a three or four. Thank you. <laughs> Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palms Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever want to give me wings You don't ever want to set me free You know I'm addicted to you And it's twisted you've been gifted with the evil voodoo Got me coming back for more even when I've been screwed Dolls full of pins, pierce my heart straight through Got issues in my head I like you in my bed But you keep me on red Oh, everything is like a test I better not text Or I'll come off desperate But if I lay down And I play dead And I stay dead Maybe you'll get Sick of being the monster Out of my head Under my bed Think you're something Dead. Will you regret? 
everything that you did that you said i don't think you understand what you're doing and my heart's black and blue from the bruising i feel like when i'm with you i'm losing i feel like you think that this amusing sitting there gaslighting and confusing was it me is it me am i deluded I'm the one who's always sorry the conclusion even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you love me like I love you it's stupid when I'm alone with you I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you I knew this when I'm with you I feel so useless I feel diluted my heart's been wounded silhouettes of you are like a dawn never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel calm I could feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like cats and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever want to give me wings You don't ever want to set me free But if I lay you down and I play dead and I stay dead Baby you'll get sick of being a monster Out of my head, under my bed Think you're something So I literally just finished this manga 10 seconds ago. So it's The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today, Volume 1. Oh my god, I'm so obsessed. I read this so quickly. It's a five stars, a new favourite. It's so freaking cute. I was giggling and laughing the whole time while reading this. And I really love the characters. They're adorable. And I just, I want to buy all of these so, so soon because I just, I need them in my life so badly. Oh, this was just like the perfect thing to read today because we had a really big day at the snow, which hopefully I'll put in all of that footage. But just having something like nice and simple and sweet to read when I'm really tired was great. And oh my god, I'm so obsessed. It's the cutest thing. Everyone needs to go pick it up. It's just this cat that's huge that is just taking care of this woman. And it's it's amazing. He like he cooks for her, he cleans, and oh my god, I love it so much. It's so good. So now on to the next manga. -na 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 -na. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'll go mid this time, like one that wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, it was okay. Oh, uh, The Summer You Were There by Yuama, so sapphic, high schoolers. Uh, basically this one struggles with mental health and basically wrote a really super sad sapphic love story and then she decides as soon as she's finished it she's going to get rid of it. Rather than dump it at home she decides to dump it at school where this lady, well girl, finds it decides to read it is like oh my god you're an amazing writer write something happy and she's like i don't know if i can i don't have any life experience she's like hey well why don't you date me and we can create those experiences it's like can this mismatched pair create their own happily ever after and quite quickly we start to learn that maybe there's something more sinister at work but it's mm. yeah it it was good it sounds interesting mm. am i gonna I mean, cry not at this one Okay. I feel like future volumes are going to. Right. Because like, I'm worried about it. <laughs> and I think on the wholesome vlog, I'm like, I have bad feelings about this. <laughs> so wholesome, yes, but heartbreaking also, I think, will be yes. <laughs>
traditional English phone box. It's got like little walk signs and everything. It's got like heritage walk. Maybe I don't got it, that's a heavy door. Fancy meeting you here. Shit. <laughs> I thought I was at home. I mean, I wouldn't mind if this was my home. I would, but history. <laughs> in the same spot yes I am this is my chair in this house and I'm sticking with it I've just finished the summer you were there I kind of love this I think I'm gonna go with like 4.25 like it tugged at my heartstrings a bit but in a really like soft and gentle way but it's oh it's also just like really intriguing because these two girls get into a kind of fake relationship kind of it's it's a little bit complicated to explain their relationship there's some mystery to them because one of the girls is she has really low self-esteem because she did something when she was younger and she feels like she's a bad person so there's like that kind of hanging over her and then the other one pretty sure she's sick so I'm really interested to see what 
happens with the rest of this but I I really like these two characters they're interesting and complex and also just like very sweet girls I really like their dynamic because there's a little bit of like grumpy sunshine happening here which I love and they just like they just kind of fit together and it's it's so sweet and I'm really really looking forward to continuing this series because I think I think it's going to be great I also think it's going to like destroy my soul so I'm really glad I read this because I was not particularly intrigued to read this like I've seen this cover before and I was like mm, yeah I don't know but I'm really really glad that I got the opportunity to read this because now I just want to continue and read all of it I will get Kirsty to choose one more manga and then we'll be done with this vlog so let's see what she picks you're gonna choose the very last manga that I'm gonna read for this little vlog because I need to post it. <laughs> so choose wisely. My questions. Ooh. Oh no! Can you not be two? <laughs> if you can't choose between two, I could read two. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give you both then. Okay. Okay. Perfect world. Mm-hmm. And sweat and soap. Ah uh, yes. You knew this one was coming at some point. I did. Perfect world is a main character who is in a wheelchair and he reunites with someone that he knew in high school and she always had a crush on him in high school and it's a bit of a shock for her seeing him now that he's wheelchair bound and she has a very sort of rough awakening to what that actually entails and when she's like i want to be in a relationship he's like trust me you don't and it's got things like one of his ex-girlfriends who literally left him because of it and she just is like well i'm not gonna do that and it's just really really sweet and wholesome but it's also like a really good one to talk that talks about how disabled people are treated in japan and the limited accessibility in japan mm. and then sweat and soap if you've been on my channel you know i what i think of this one it starts off kind of creepy and weird because it's like he smells her sweat and is like oh this is really inspirational and I want to know more but it does spark a relationship between them and he kind of helps her embrace the fact that she has this sweating problem as someone who does also suffer with hyperhidrosis which is the condition called is excessive sweating it was really refreshing to see it not being like grossalized I can't really think of the appropriate word so yeah, and it was my, I think, my biggest surprise. Ooh, thank oh. you. Okay, so I've finished Perfect World Volume 1. I didn't love it. I think I'm giving it a 2.75. I don't know what it was about this, but I just, I couldn't. The art style was a little different, but also, like, the characters I didn't care for. Like, I don't know, nothing about them made me want to like connect to them or anything i didn't care about them or their lives or their relationship i really really didn't care about the relationship the guy is so closed off but like not in a way that makes it seem like he's gonna open up i don't know it just it wasn't hitting right for me at all and i feel bad because kirstie says she gave this five stars and she loves it and i didn't care so oops
just finished Sweat and Soap Volume 1 and I really liked it. <laughs> very surprising. Kirsty was even surprised by this when she read it. It's one of those mangas that's very surprising. I think I'm gonna give this a 4.5. I really enjoyed it. I liked the characters. I liked the romance. Hi guys. Hey. Hi guys. <laughs> I was wrapping up Sweat and Soap because I just oh. finished it. What do you think I gave it? Four. 4.5. Yes! <laughs> this was very much about these people that work in a like toiletries making company. They make soaps and lotions and stuff. This guy develops the fragrances and she works in finance and she has excessive sweating and he has like a, a super sniffer nose it's a really cute combination and they like they end up in a relationship together and it's very cute the beginning was a little creepy <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely got better after that and i appreciate that they had a lot of like really good communication between the two of them i also like that there was a bit of talk about this being a workplace romance so he's technically like higher up in the company than she is and there was a bit of talk about you know you know their positions in the company and like they sorted that all out but i was like i like that those kind of conversations are happening and it shows that they're really invested in each other and this working and I, I really liked that. That was really cute. It was also way steamier than I was expecting. And uh, that wasn't a bad thing. Like, I really didn't expect to like this. But I'm kind of hooked. And I really want to continue the series. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> it shouldn't be good. No. But, like, it's real good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good to end this on, like, a really good note. I've now read all of the manga that I got Kirsty to pick out for me. So I read a whole bunch of manga from memory, the ones I really, really want to continue, Promised Neverland, Sweat and Soap, The Summer You Were Here, Masterful Cat is Depressed Again. So yeah, must continue those four. The ones that I did really like and want to continue, most of them were very surprising. So I really like that I was able to do this and that Kirsty picked out some amazing manga for me to read because I wouldn't have necessarily read them otherwise. We're going to leave it here for this vlog because... And now to Scotland! Yeah! Woo! We're going to Scotland! Birthday trip! Birthday trip! That's going to be awesome. I will hopefully be able to do another vlog of Scotland because Scotland... I don't know how to end vlogs anymore. I haven't done a vlog in, I don't know, six or seven months. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other manga that you think I should read, just to see if I'll like it or not. Let me know. I'm always in the mood to read manga. But thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time. Bye.